Okay. So I've done the acknowledgement to traditional owners. We'll get straight into the presentation for World Ocean Day 2022 Reef Blitz. Um, this is an initiative that we try and do something special every year for World Ocean Day, which is June the 8th. We've tried a range of different activities to engage and inspire people to take action for our ocean. And if you'd like to review some of the things we've done on previous years, they're all on our website. The theme for 2022 is really around iNaturalist. It's about trying to encourage the community to survey marine life, to be reef detectives, to be reef naturalists, to have some fun, um, to walk along our beaches, to go out in a boat, to take photos of what they observe. And that could be everything from a, a mangrove to a seashell, to a live or dead coral, to a fish, to a shark. And we're doing it in a big area, the whole of the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park, but we're doing it for a short time from the 1st of June to the 8th of June. And we're gonna be providing daily updates, not only on the species that people photograph and share, but also on the naturalists themselves, because that's what citizen science is all about. It's about people. So I discovered iNaturalist about a year ago, but it's actually been an app that's been around for over 10 years. Uh, it's a, a joint venture between the Californian Academy of Science and the National Geographic Society. And it has grown exponentially over the last 10 years to the point now that it's the largest citizen science application in the world with over 100 million observations. And you can see on my screen the heat map. There's an awful lot of red in many places. In fact, the only place I can see where there hasn't been a lot of iNaturalist is Libya, but everywhere else, there's been some observations of an unbelievable 380,000 species. Um, so it's a great popular tool used by a lot of people. And I guess we want to encourage you and your networks and your family, if you haven't tried it already, to try it, to share knowledge on what we see here on the Great Barrier Reef. I'm going to now pass over to Al Song Chan. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon again. I'm, my name is Al. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through um, how to get started with iNaturalist. So does anyone have the iNaturalist installed on their phone or even have a iNaturalist account? Well, if not, well, yeah, I can see some hands. Yeah, so if not, I'm just going to walk through the process quickly so you can um, take this opportunity to create an account. So you can either go to inaturalist.org on your computer or alternatively search and install the iNaturalist app on Google Play Store or Apple App Store. You only need to have an email address, assign a username and a password in order to start an account. So I guess if majority has the account, well, we can pause for a second just to get everyone installing and creating an account. And for the people that haven't got an account and want to stay on at the end, we're happy to troubleshoot and help you make your first sighting. Yeah. All right, so moving on. So that's the step one. Step two is of course, going out and taking a photo of your observation. So it can be marine, terrestrial, plant, or veg vegetation. But for reef bleeds, we're trying to focus on marine species and uh, associated habitats. Now in taking photos, so through the mobile app, what you can do, I can just pause this now. All right, so uh, using your mobile app, you can open your app and click on the new observation bo uh, button or the plus sign button and then take a photo 
or choose from your existing photo in your gallery. As you can see here, I took a photo of myself and then I clicked on what did you see to view some suggestions of identification. So, well, luckily I turned out to be a human, not a <laughs> robot. And then, so after that, you can select the suggested identification at a location. Well, in adding a location, you can either type in your location or manually look for the location uh, and pin it on the map. And then after that, you can add it to a specific project if you want, and just click on the green check to upload your observation. Now on the website, so on the web, on using the website, first is we can select a photo or even a screenshot of a video that you took uh, underwater. So for example, I'm using this photo, as you can see. Uh, there are lots of different species in the photo. So in order to help the iNaturalist app, we'll try and focus on a single species on a photo. So you can do that by either editing the photo using the crop tool or taking a small screenshot focusing on that particular species. Now, after you have that photo, you can go back to your iNaturalist account and then click on the upload button located on the upper right hand of the page. And then we just choose the photo that we want to upload, click on the species name and view the suggestions. And here, let me just pause this. Let's just go back a bit. So here you can see that the algorithm uh, suggested many different species, including uh, the family or the genus level identification and uh, everything that matches the, according to the appearance of the, of the photo. So from here, you can choose whether if you wanna go to family level or genus level or downright to the species level, if you're confident enough. And then after selecting the identification, you just add the location uh, on the map and then add it to your project. So as you can see here, I am manually looking for the location. So once I located Helix Reef, I will just put a pin on it and then adjust the radius just to make sure that it covers um, the Helix Reef or any projects associated with it. Now, after that, we can submit this, the observation and then check uh, the activity on your post uh, if there are any suggestions coming from other citizen scientists or the community. Now, there are a few tips when taking photos. Make sure that you capture distinguishing features of fish or marine life, preferably taking photos of fish from the side. So this is just an example of a bad photo. As you can see, fish is facing you and you, can't, you cannot see the markings that helps us identify the fish. And then a, a better photo would be this one. Uh, next, we also try to help the algorithm provide reliable identification by only including a single species in a photo just to avoid confusions. And you can, all, of course, you can all do that by, as I mentioned, editing or cropping the photo. And lastly, we try to take photos of fish that are um, on its side rather than swimming away. All right, step four. As I've said, we'll wait for other citizen scientists to verify your, or your identification. So on the screen, there are two photos. On the left is an observation where I misidentified a species. So I put in black saddle Toby and someone corrected me that it's a black saddle foul fish. So, and then I had a closer look and yeah, that's correct. So I agreed with the identification. And then on the right, uh, this is showing a juvenile harlequin swift lips. So I identified it right. And then another community member verified the identification. So once the community member or other citizen scientist verifies your identification, it will be marked as a research grade observation. Now, research grade observations are then uploaded and shared to the Global Biodiversity Information Facility or GBIF, which is an open access and free database for everyone. So uh, a lot of people are using this database for their uh, 
study and research. And some people have discovered new species or distribution extension of distribution of particular species through iNaturalist. All right, to talk about recent iNaturalist projects, I'll pass you over to Rochelle. Hi everyone. So again, I'm Rochelle and I'll take you through iNaturalist projects. So what are projects? You basically can set certain criteria and that focuses observations to that area. We at Reef Ecologic run, currently run four projects, one at the SS Yangala Shipwreck, one at Orpheus Island in the Marine Park, one at Magnetic Island or Yunbanun, and one at the Coral Greenhouse at John Brewer Reef. Now, these are all small projects, but what we'll be doing, as Adam said, is making a much, much larger project as part of the reef blitz. Within these projects, you can see that, for example, at John Brewer Reef, only 10 people have contributed photographs or, or observations, but 50 people have participated in helping to identify those species. And so far there have been 228 species across 472 observations, just at John Brewer Reef. When we get to, uh, our larger project, the Reef Blitz, will be able to take a look at similar statistics. So this project that we're running is the Reef Blitz in celebration of World Ocean Day. This encompasses all of the Great Barrier Reef World Heritage Site. Any observations uploaded between tomorrow on the 1st of June through to the 8th of June will automatically be counted towards this project. You don't need to do anything special. As long as it's within that area, it will be automatically added. There's a link within the story map to that project as well. And people can track it and look along at the different observations that are added each day. You can see this encompasses a huge area, all the way from Bundaberg in the south up to the Torres Strait. So no matter where you are along the Great Barrier Reef, we look forward to seeing your observations. Fine. Also, if you'd like to add your observations to other projects, such as the Australasian Fishes Project, this is possible too. Once you begin uploading a couple different pictures, the admin of the Australasian Fishes Project will get in contact with you and ask if you'd like to join their project. So your observations can help not just our project, but any number of projects within iNaturalist. There are a couple interesting observations we picked out just to show you an example of what kind of things can be found within iNaturalist. For instance, this gray nurse shark was observed 15 years ago by a user. And they're normally found much more south within the uh, on the coastline. But this observation 15 years ago is the only one of the species uploaded to iNaturalist. So who knows, when you're out in the water, you could potentially see a gray nurse shark and be the next observation. Another one we'd like to point out is the giant star core. This one's interesting because it's a fairly uncommon genus that's seen around here. And it was observed quite recently within the last month. It also shows that whether you're in the water, snorkeling, scuba diving, fishing, or if you're just walking along the beach, you can see the same species of coral was found and has been high enough quality to be research grade. So anywhere that you are, you can help participate in this project. And finally, I'll be passing along to Nathan to wrap up. No, no, sorry. Lights on, we're all good. So hopefully that's giving you everybody a little bit of inspiration 
for the next week. If you're in the Great Barrier Reef region, get out there, take some photos of our marine life, share it with the iNaturalist community and start to educate yourself on what's in your local environment. There's a couple of people online. Susan's in Brisbane, Debt's heading back to Melbourne. So you probably won't be able to contribute to the reef blitz itself. There's no reason why you can't contribute to your local environment. Susan's got her own website, web page about iNaturalist in her local environment. So if there's not an opportunity for the reef blitz itself, there's plenty of opportunities to start to get involved and, and get excited by the natural world around you. At the moment, um, our sort of push begins tomorrow and many of our team are actually going to be out on the water at probably from about 6 a.m. So the, the, uh, the challenge will be to see who's first at sit, submitting an observation for Reef Blitz 2022. We as in Reef Ecologic, may have a few spaces available to take people out onto the reef. So if you're interested in coming along, um, either send whoever you know as an email or drop your email um, address in the chat. Um, I know we're heading out this week, possibly on the weekend. Um, so there might be an opportunity for a couple of people to join us on our vessel doing some snorkeling and learning about our local environment. So I think that's it for our presentation today. And right now I would just like to open the floor to any questions that anyone may have. And silence grips the room. Do you have anything else? Oh, Nathan, and I, Nathan I, uh, just a quick one, uh, it's Lee here. Yes, go Lee. Gotcha. Uh, do you have anything? Do you have anything happening locally? Um, I'm just thinking, you know, we're putting out social media posts through the week, and it could be a good one to promote uh, for any locals in the area. Uh, where would I go for that information? Um, we actually have a media release on our website. We've done one interview with ABC Radio this morning. We're doing another one this afternoon. Um, it's obviously weather dependent where people go and but everyone's got a, a phone just about so just by walking along the foreshore you can capture an image of a mangrove or possibly a fish and contribute to this project we are hoping that schools will get involved and we are hoping that there will be a lot more activity over the weekend if if you know fishers and divers are going out and lee I can send you a digital copy of that flyer that I gave you on the weekend um, with a little bit. That'd be great. And you can stick that on your social media. So I'll do that this afternoon. Perfect. Thank you. Hi, that's yeah, and also I've got a quick one. Um, so this event, I might miss it. Might miss it. Um, okay, there's no echo anymore, right? I got it, Joanne. Yeah, right. So um, does it have the picture? Does that, do they have to be taken during next week or I can use my old pictures to share it? You can use your old pictures for iNaturalist. That's fine. Particularly if you've got a good photo or something that you're proud of that will go to your personal iNaturalist story. But we are focusing on reef blitz between the first and the 8th of June. So we are focusing on our project associated with those dates and in that spatial area. But it's more a catalyst project. We just wanna try and get people involved and then they can decide to continue and, and you know, look in other areas and so forth. But to answer your question, Joan, I have actually, and I'm still going back through all my old photos and adding to the database to educate myself and share the knowledge. So you can do both. Awesome, right. I don't, I'm not going out on the reef next week, but I have, yeah, like you, I think I've got three or four photos of them. <laughs> um, can I just ask a question? The, um, the Global Diversity Information Facility, do, so do observations get automatically um, processed across to that? 
Yes, uh, high naturalist observations will be um, automatically shared with the GBIF database after a week it's been research graded. Okay, um, the only reason I ask is because um, uh, from Norfolk Island, I've, the Australian Living Museum, I think it is, um, you, you can opt in to do that with, with um, iNaturalist. But for some reason, there's a glitch in the system that doesn't recognize Norfolk Island, which is a common, mm -hmm. a common thing because we're so tiny. Um, so I just wondered if that was happening as well. But I'll check it out. Thank you. And also another quick one. Um, I haven't used it yet. So since I'm completely new to it, just curious if I'm uploading the images, do I always have to put the geotag in it or it can actually get the information from the images I uploaded if there's no cropping or any other like saving modifications of it? Well, first of all, in order for an observation to be a research grade, it has to have a photo, a date and a location. So um, yeah. I know that some photos may be geotagged, but iNaturalist doesn't really um, process that. So you have to either search for the location and add it by searching it or looking for, for the particular pin on the map. And then- Ooh, And they also don't read the date. Oh, they, read, that sort they, read, of they read the date from the photo. It was taken, okay. not uploaded. So that's good, yeah. that's good enough. Awesome. And, and also uh, when putting in location, um, iNaturalist has this um, automatic filter system where if the species is threatened or endangered, they actually don't put the exact observation location just to protect the species, but it tells you roughly where it was found. So it does that, and, but, but people who's uploading photos also has the op option to manually adjust that uh, location. Yeah, that makes sense, thanks. And in order to speed up the transfer of underwater photos to the iNaturalist database, once you've put your location in correctly the first time, I always just pin it and call it a name. So for example, Alma Bay on Magnetic Island. So then for my second observation, rather than having to type it in and search for it, I just pull down the menu of pinned locations. It's a lot easier. There's also the option, if you have a lot of observations from the same trip, you can upload multiple at once and you can change details on that individually or all together as a group. So sometimes I do that so I can get the same location for all of the observations, and then I can go through it and individually ID them. Any other questions? I'm just responding to Julie, who asked if there's space for some students to go along, but I just was typing in there that we only have a small boat, so there's only going to be room for a couple of people. Unless we wanted to organise a field event at Magnetic Island. I think that would be very sensible. So Julie, if you'd be keen to do that, um, we could maybe look at doing something on the weekend and we'd be happy to help facilitate that. Obviously, um, there'd be a cost to the students to get the ferry across, but might be something worthwhile, especially because the weather's looking pretty good this weekend. Excellent. Yeah, thanks, Nathan. Um, I was just thinking when I asked about the students and potentially going on the boat, we've actually, we've been trying to get our reef guardians up and going and there's only been a couple of students that have been consistently coming. So I was like, oh, it'd be an awesome reward for those students that have, you know, shown that initiative and been coming on a regular basis. Um, the other thing too, if you do do something over on Magnetic Island, we actually have a lot of town high students that live on the island. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, so it might even just be an opportunity for, for them to um, come along and, and join you if you are doing something over there. Right. And I might have a last question. Since you would like us to share it on social media, is there any tags that you want to see or anything like that type of thing? I will send you an email, Joan, after this meeting. So I'm just actually drafting something to send to Lee. So I'll make sure you're included in that. And we'll also do some updates every 
day or every second day as to how many observations, whether there's been any interesting species, and you can share that and hopefully that will encourage other people to get out and, and add to the project as well. And one thing I will note that maybe some of you didn't notice, but there was a link in the chat that provided a link to the actual presentation that we gave, which is basically a web page on the ArcGIS story map. So if uh, the presentation went a bit quickly or whatever, you can go back and walk yourself through that there. Okay, well, on behalf of the team and World Ocean Day and Reef Blitz 2022, thank you very much for joining us, for asking questions. We do hope you'll be able to get out on the water over the next eight or nine days. And please contact us if we can help facilitate an opportunity to collaborate together. I'm going to stop the recording, but we will be posting this online.